Hello and welcome to the third and final building physics tutorial. My name is Helge Simon, I'm head of software engineering for the Envent company and today we want to have a look at how to start a simulation and then also how to analyze the simulation data. So last time uh, we digitized our model area and this time we want to first generate input files or simulation uh, configuration files and we do that by using the Envy guide. The Envy guide offers you the possibility to generate simulation configuration files in initial conditions, boundary conditions, etc. in a tutorial uh, kind of way. So you first select the project you want to um, work with, in our case building physics, and since we did not uh, generate a simx file beforehand, we create a new one. So the first thing it's asking is what should be the name of the simulation and we can call it building physics and we do the same again and we want to simulate for um, let's say seven days so around 160 hours and we start the simulation on the 23rd of June and we give it a bit shorter name because we don't want to exceed the windows 250 uh, characters. So we click next and then it's asking us okay do you have a model area? We do have a model area we could if we did not have one we could create it here or edit our model area we could do that with spaces or with the vector editor mod but since we have it it's uh, it's fine. So um, it takes the new area INX that we created last time. So we click next and it now asks us uh, to uh, say okay which level are we? 99% of the time beginner and intermediate are enough, um, offer the enough possibilities since we want to have a full forcing which means we want to have boundary conditions that are changing over the course of the simulation. Uh, we click intermediate and we say okay yes we do have measured data and we um, downloaded them from the EPW files. So we take the full forcing um, and since I already created a full forcing out of the EPW file I can uh, now load this. So it's now loading um, since it's a year-round forcing file um, it's of course possible um, to simulate the time that we need and uh, I want to force all of these different parameters. I do not want to specify any more details to the soil or root sections or maybe yes to the soil sections. 70% um, of soil humidity I go down a bit to maybe 55 at the top and then 70 and 75 um, at the deep and block bedrock layer. Okay I say next and in the next step I can say okay save and start simulation and uh, I click save and start simulation now. First I save it and then the simulation is starting. Uh, since I'm currently using the light version I will register uh, my license first and then I will start the simulation. So s since this is quite well known for, for you guys um, I will get back to you when the simulation is finished. Okay, so the simulation finished and uh, now we can have a look at the simulation results. So I navigate to the model output um, and of course since we're interested in buildings or building physics, the buildings um, folder is the one that we're interested in. And we're also interested in the dynamic data and here I just click into let's say for the first day the 2 o'clock 2 p.m. simulation output. Let's have a look at that. Okay so we go into the uh, 3D map and uh, we have a look at the facades. So first maybe the facade temperature of the outside. So as you remember from the first video our multiple node model identifies seven nodes inside the wall. So on the outside is node 1 and node 7 is on the inside 
and these are all inside of the structure. So let's have a look at the outside facade temperatures. We extract the data and we have a look at the we enable the facade uh, settings, maybe make a floating chart of, out of it, color um, floating, color mapping, and what we can clearly see is, yeah, they are very different the temperatures. So first of all, of course, it's uh, 2 p.m., so the sun is coming more or less from, from this angle, or this angle, so the shaded surfaces are much cooler. And what you can also see is that the uh, facade temperature of the greenhouse is much higher than of all the other structures. And you can also, of course, also see that different materials like the like the windows in um, the, the facades, they um, have a higher temperature, show a higher temperature. You can also see that here we have cooler temperatures. These lower windows have cooler temperatures in these facade, this facade here as well, as well as this facade, well, this is because of the trees. So if we have a look at the trees, um, let's disable all of them we don't need and maybe make them a bit more transparent. You can see that they shade the facade. Yeah, they shade the facade and thus the um, facade temperatures are much lower. And this is also, of course, the case down here where we have um, shaded structures. Here you can also see again the, the shade the building is casting on itself. So let's disable the trees again. So what you can clearly see here in this snapshot of 2 p.m. of the first day, um, we have the interaction of outside and inside, or outside and facade structure. So the trees, of course, they cast the shade, and this shade is then, of course, applied to the the facade and reduces the um, temperature a lot. So if we look at the facade and the values up here, so here you can see the values, it's 31 degrees here and then it's 39 here, so where there's no shade due to, due to uh, trees and vegetation. In the back here, how much do we have here? It's 60, yeah, 63 degrees centigrade, so it's quite hot. And of course, the, the rooftops are also hotter um, than the wall facade structures. So this is, of course, something that's quite interesting. And we also see, we just uh, do not have to just look at the temperature, but we can also have a look at the long wave radiation emitted by the facade. And this is, of course, a direct function of the facade temperature. Um, we can also have a look at the Incoming short of radiation received. So here you can see the tree even better, the effect of the tree and the effect of um, a direct shade. Yeah, so these are shaded um, structures. And you see how many watts of shortwave um, radiation is coming onto them. And you also see that the trees, they do not cast a, um, a f full shade and they cast a very depending on the how many leaf area surface um, there is uh, the the ray tracing uh, will notice okay i reduce the short wave radiation only by that amount of um, uh, watts so uh, you can also of course have a look at the absorbed short wave radiation there you see the differences in the properties yeah so here we have a surface material with a much higher albedo on this building than in this building, and thus the absorbed short of radiation is much lower. If we had greening, we could also have a lot of um, interesting um, information about the greening here, and of course as well as uh, for the substrate. Um, but uh, one thing I want to um, take a closer look at is the temperature of the building inside. Um, Right now, what you can see displayed here is the wind speed in front of the facade. This, of course, has a um, big impact on the um, heat fluxes, on the uh, sensible heat fluxes um, that are carried away due to advection here. So, but now let's have a look at the temperature of the building inside. 
and here first you see the scale okay the scale seems to be very different yeah so one some buildings are displayed in uh, just blue colors of blue and the greenhouse is in uh, purple yeah and this is because the temperature is varying a lot uh, among these three buildings or well, it's actually four buildings you remember this one is a separate building from separate air volume from this one and um, we now want to have a look uh, at the uh, temperature evolution inside these different buildings because building physics of course not only means that the buildings they shape the microclimate but the microclimate shapes the building physics or the building parameters um, the, the indoor air temperature for example so having a look at that um, we can uh, do that by right clicking on a building cell and it will then collect all the data that belongs to this cell for all the time steps that we have outputs for and this would be seven days as i said before and once leonardo uh, collected all of the different outputs well, you see this window uh, this map explorer and currently you have uh, all the data for this uh, element but only for one time step so by right clicking and setting set the time series to the whole range we have access to all the different um, parameters and see here a quick preview um, of, the, of the data uh, what you can clearly see when i mark um, these nodes inside the wall that you see okay in the outside temperature at daytime um, is the highest and then you see the conduction is carrying the heat um, and transferring it to the inside but um, like I said, we want to have a look at the indoor temperature of the of the building, and what you can clearly see here is it goes up during the course of the simulation, and this is because the more and more heat storage um, when the simulation is running for longer. So we start with a indoor temperature of twenty degrees centigrade, and the, and the next morning. Uh, we don't start again at 20 degrees centigrade, but at 24.5. And from that point, again, um, there's heat uh, transferred to the inside. And this goes on and on. You see that we are going up with the gradient. Um, and on the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, at the seventh day, we already gain 10 degrees centigrade. In the indoor temperature so this is quite a lot and um, we now want to compare um, this this gra these graphs or distinct air volumes of the buildings and we can easily do that by exporting um, the data to excel so um, i will do that now and i will get back to you once i've done that just one more thing so since these are distinct air volumes it doesn't really matter where you extract the data so if i click here um, for this building or somewhere else on um, th for this air volume doesn't matter since i'm not interested in th this particular facade element but at the indoor temperature of the um, air volume that is the same for every facade element here so i'll come back to you once um, the data has been extracted so I extracted the, the information, the data, and I received uh, four Excel files from it. And let's have a look at the large building first. So what you get is a huge data file. And these parameters here called wall, or starting with wall, um, they, are all belong to, they, all, they all belong to the facade element. Um, since we're not interested in the individual facade element, but rather in the um, indoor temperature, um, let, we can select this column B and say insert and get a 2D chart. So this is basically the same chart as we had before in um, the quick preview. You see that it's going up and up and up and up and up the indoor temperature, not just the maximum, of the indoor temperature is going up but also the minimum so we selected a long lasting heat wave where the in outside um, atmospheric air temperature was more or less the same um, over the course of the simulation so there's this gradient in it and it's leveling out at the end of the simulation period 
So let's have a look at the other buildings. So let's have a look at the greenhouse now. So greenhouse, I also extract the sheet and just see these huge variations. Yeah, the greenhouse, uh, the the end or outer images like you would expect from a greenhouse, they get up really really high and you don't see a, a heat storage phenomenon here because you have the transmission of the radiation um, uh, that's quite quite well through the glass facades and uh, these huge amplitudes over the course of one day and it's going back and forth here these small variations they are uh, caused by the differences in the meteorology outside meteorology and if we compare these two um, results, you can quickly see, okay, the one is varying a lot. There is no, of course, no natural ventilation in, in Envimet in the buildings. So you, know, you see these very high spikes of the um, greenhouse and the orange ones of the large building in, in front. So how, do, how does the insulated wall or how does the insulated buildings, how do they compare? So I quickly prepared a short overview about the indoor temperatures, the varying indoor temperatures for the three different air volumes. So in black you have the uninsulated wall and in uh, the dashed red you have the uh, insulated large uh, building, larger part of the building. And as we already discussed, first you have lower indoor temperatures in the insulated large building, and then starting from the second day and definitely from the th uh, third day, you see you have higher indoor air temperatures in the insulated large building. And uh, this is due to the fact that Enumet does not have a natural ventilation in there. So people living there would most likely open their windows at night time and try to cool the indoor air um, at night and then close the windows again. So uh, taking into, into account this, you would most likely see uh, a lower indoor temperature in the insulated uh, larger part of the building. And then you have the insulated smaller part of the building, and here you see a lower indoor air temperature. And this is, of course, uh, due to the outside meteorology. So we have huge trees placed in, in front of this um, part of the building, and you have a much better relation of surface to volume. So the smaller building has a higher surface, so advection uh, has more room to, to take its effect and cool the building. And the air volume inside is, of course, also smaller, and thus there's uh, less inertia. So it doesn't take uh, so long time to, to cool down and to react to the outside parameters that are driving the indoor temperature. So comparing these uh, three buildings, you can clearly see it makes a huge difference, not just the physical parameters, but also um, the outside microclimate, because they are placed right next to each other, um, and then Envimet is run using the same outside metrology, so the, the boundary conditions are, of course, exactly the same for all three of them, but the combination of the different building physics, as well as the um, different configurations of trees, configurations of where they are placed, what when they are shaded and when they are not shaded, um, they uh, cause very different indoor air temperatures. Um, I guess we all can feel, um, at least in the northern hemisphere right now with the really hot summer, that it makes a big difference sleeping uh, with an indoor air temperature of 27 degrees centigrade or maybe 32.5 or uh, 30 degrees centigrade. It makes a big difference to our health, to our um, sleep quality, and this um, of course affects us humans uh, a lot. From here of course you can have a much more in-depth investigation with the simulation results. You can have a look at the different layers inside a wall and um, you can of course also imagine that this was a very small model area. So if it's not just a model area like uh, the one we had here, if not a model area like this, but if you model, like Andromed is perfectly capable, a model area of maybe two by two kilometers where you have um, 
lots and lots and lots of buildings placed right next to each other, uh, then it makes a big, big, big difference if the building is placed in the city center and you have uh, heat storage uh, due to other buildings. They uh, emit long wave radiation at night and this long wave radiation is of course um, being absorbed again by the next building and you have these feedback loops so you see there is a even bigger process of course at hand and here the advantages of using Envimet also to examine building physics or to um, increase the building physics detail when using uh, when coupling maybe with building physics models here the advantages really come into play I hope you found these tutorials useful and thank you for watching. Goodbye.